The documentary begins with the filmmaker sharing an experience. He talks about his journalism teacher, who once told him that a good journalist could make the most boring subject entertaining. Just a humble student back then. The filmmaker shares how those words stuck with him. As he speaks, we see images of a film crew shooting what looks like a zombie movie. The filmmaker's entire career consists of producing and directing zombie movies. He thinks it's an easy niche that can be made entertaining with minimum effort. Now he is ready for a challenge that his teacher would be proud of. It is to prove that ghosts exist. The man, named Turner, claims to have been the furthest from the belief that supernaturals existed until one year ago. But he discovered, if one looks in the right places, the startling discoveries would render one speechless. We see a video from September 2012. A camera in a hotel hallway records a man, opening the door to a room for a reason currently unknown. He is John, and he wants someone to call the police after witnessing something highly disturbing inside. He says no one is in there, yet all the furniture has been turned upside down. When John walks away, we see a strange light moving inside. Moving along, the filmmaker arrives in Lexington, Kentucky, in the year 2014. This is where we see our filmmaker properly for the first time. He says Kentucky has always been a home to him. He moved to California 10 years ago, shortly after finishing high school. What brought him back was the winter in his home state. He has been debating what kind of project he should do. It will either be another zombie movie or a ghost venture. He says it's embarrassing for him to tell his mom that he's a ghost hunter. Following this, he talks about the video of the hotel and how John, the man who filmed it, reached out to him recently. Thus, he wants to call John to ask him if he thinks ghosts are real. On the phone call, Turner starts by saying, He's doing a documentary on ghosts. He tells John not to take offense, but he thinks the video is fake. This prompts John to say that anyone who knows him can tell Turner that the former can't do the things seen in the video. However, Turner would still appreciate it if John told him the video is fake. John claims that the public will always think the video is a joke, regardless of how real the events in it were. Three weeks later, Turner sits in his car, calling someone to leave a message. He really needs to get in touch with this mystery person but so far they're not picking up. The bad news is that he does not have any material for his ghost documentary. It is pushing him towards quitting the genre altogether. He'd rather go back to creating zombie movies. Yet two years later, he grabs his camera for the documentary again, this time with a fresh perspective. Turner has acquired an interesting lead. He was approached by many people who claimed to have legitimate ghost footage, but all of them were nonsense, with one exception. About to play the video in question, he says it's from a man named... Craig. Once he starts the video, we see the inside of a house. It's eerily dark, but not for long. Suddenly a lamp switches on by itself. When it switches off, there is a faint light visibly moving in the back. It is a short video that intrigues Turner to the point of wanting to call Greg and talk to him about his intriguing experience. After the phone call, Turner says he's going to Pennsylvania, so he boards a tiny plane and starts his journey. His wife, Terry, is traveling with him to record additional footage. They arrive in Pennsylvania and successfully locate Greg's house. Turner lightly comments on its uncanny appearance. He takes a photo of it before he approaches the front door. Greg opens it to welcome the duo inside. There, they see the security camera that captured the video Turner watched. Greg informs the couple that he has been living in this house for 50 long years. He experiences paranormal activity regularly. A few nights ago, he heard the kitchen cabinets opening and closing. Soon Turner asks Greg if anyone has passed away in his house. The man tells him both of his parents lost their lives there. His father passed away by falling down the stairs back when Greg was a kid. His mother passed away eight years ago from a heart attack. They both knew the house was haunted. One summer, all the doors in the house were open. Disturbingly, they all suddenly slammed shut at the same time. There is no way the wind could have done that because the doors were in different positions. Needless to say, this inexplicable phenomenon scared the family quite a bit. Later on, Greg takes them upstairs to the master bedroom, where there isn't much paranormal activity. It makes him think the entity respects his privacy. They leave the bedroom and Greg walks up the stairs, letting Turner listen to the creaking sound it makes. He says that almost every night, he hears those same sounds as he tries to sleep. Strangely, the entity stops at the door, never going inside the room. Greg also does not hear it walk away. One time, he had some friends spend the night in the guest room. In the morning, they asked him why he was walking up and down the stairs all night long, but he couldn't tell them what it was. Inside his music studio, Greg tells another story. A few years ago, he was out of town on business. His neighbor called him to confirm whether Greg was back home. The reason he called 
was because he saw all the lights in the house switched on. He also saw a figure standing by the window. The man even called the police, yet upon their arrival, the lights were off, and the figure vanished. Greg emphasizes to Turner that his neighbor is a truthful man who would not weave such a lie. Subsequently, Greg warns the couple that what he is about to show them might prompt them to run out of the house screaming. Intrigued, they follow the homeowner to the basement, where he leads them to something that looks like a manhole. He says it's a well and used to serve as the house's main source of water. There is a story behind it. Greg shares that the house was built around the year 1930. The man who built it had a wife who was somewhat crazy. When the children in the neighborhood started to go missing, the neighbors suspected her because of how strange she was. Thus they investigated the well and made a horrifying discovery. The children were visibly disturbed by the shocking stories. The couple stands outside Greg's house to say farewell to him. Three weeks later, Turner joins Terry on their couch back at home. He's received an email from Greg. Reading it reveals that Greg offers the couple an opportunity to stay in his house while he is away. Terry expresses her fake enthusiasm to stay there. We see them getting ready to fly again on their tiny plane. The duo arrives at Greg's house at last. Turner starts filming inside and records the room where Greg's mother passed away. The weirdest part for Turner is sleeping in someone else's bed. In the basement, he tells his wife what was put into the well, but it's not shocking to her. Soon, Turner puts two pieces of toilet paper on a table in the living room to form an X. He puts a ball in the middle of it. Whatever happens, the security camera will capture it. The man saw a video on the internet that told him, if a ghost sees a ball, it will want to move it. Now is the time to test that theory. Shortly after, he places night vision cameras in different areas of the house. When they get ready for bed, they set up a camera in the bedroom that will record them all night. As the couple sleeps, we watch what the night vision cameras record. In the living room, the lamp turns on again, like it did in the video that brought Greg there. But the ball does not move. Come morning, Turner reports there is no evidence the house is haunted. However, interestingly, a certain door is open. Alas, he did not place a camera there to record it. He also did not notice whether it was shut last night. Turner shows us a 16mm film camera. He reads that if one starts to film things in low-lit areas with such a camera, something might show up on it. So he starts to film several locations in the house, including the ominous well in the basement. There, the man says he keeps on hearing things. This prompts his skeptical wife to say it's an old house. Once he turns on the light, it sounds like someone just walked upstairs for a few seconds. Later, Turner is disappointed to say they didn't see as much as he thought they would. He says he failed at another venture and thinks his documentary won't be good. The house may be haunted, yet he doubts it now. At a late night hour though, something interesting takes place. While we watch from the camera that records them sleeping, a loud noise wakes up Terry. Her husband follows suit. He turns on his camera and starts walking with it. The moment he opens the door, they hear the alarm going off. Seeing smoke coming from downstairs, Turner urges his wife to call the fire department. He goes down there and discovers that the door to the basement is open. Cautiously, he reaches out and closes it. Moving forward, Turner sees the oven and the stove switch on. The knobs on the stovetop are twisted, adding to the eerie atmosphere. Of course, he quickly turns them off. Then Turner sees the basement door is open again, despite him having recently closed it. He walks to the door, closes it, and locks it this time. He asks his wife if she came downstairs, and she denies that she did. We see how scared the man is. He can't stop filming the basement door. Once he's upstairs, he calls the fire department to say there is no fire, and it was just a false alarm. The next day, Turner calls the Pennsylvania Archival Services. He tells them that he is looking for an old newspaper from the 1940s. He gives us a quick lesson by sharing that newspapers receive a snapshot to get archived. Moving along, he tells a person from the services that he would like all the newspapers from 1938 to 1942. He calculates it will be over 4,000 newspapers he will have to look through. At a different time, Turner tells us he's been looking through microfilmed newspapers for approximately three hours, and he finally found something. We see it's a newspaper with a photo of Greg's house from the year 1941. Turner says, the article states a story similar to the one Greg told him. There is also a photo of the woman in the article. Her name is Ruth Blackwell. According to the article, she claimed the lives of seven children. Turner's documentary is finally taking an interesting turn. He is scared to stay an extra night in the house. The scene ends with a slow zoom in on the photo of Ruth, adding a sinister element to what has just unfolded. Later, Turner is trying to remove the very heavy lid from the well. Once he does it, the stench that emanates from within disorients him. 
He presents a tube of the dirty water he collected from it. He follows this by lowering a string down the well to see how far it will go. Soon he tells us the string has been lowered perhaps 60 feet. It is disturbing for him to think what Ruth did in that well. It doesn't take long for him to say it's a bad idea to be there. The smell is unbearable, and he's having a hard time breathing. Thus, he struggles to place the heavy lid back onto the well. The next scene has Turner saying he's been having equipment issues. For some reason, all of his cameras are lifeless, and their batteries won't charge. Later in the night, we observe the living room from the security cameras recording. The ball is still on the table, as stationary as it was. Suddenly, the camera glitches before oddly switching off. Turner starts filming himself in bed, saying he expects something to happen. Interestingly, the power to the entire house had been shut down. However, the electricity is on in his neighbor's house. This causes him to think there is an issue with the circuit box. But he is scared to venture into the basement to check on it. Being the brave one, Terry asks if he wants her to go there. He refuses, perhaps not wanting to look like a coward. When he opens the door, he hears the sound of running water. Entering the nearest washroom, Turner observes the bathtub faucet pouring water, so he turns it off. Before he walks downstairs, he tells his wife to call the police if she hears him scream. In the first floor washroom, it is the same situation. The sink's faucet is pouring water. The kitchen faucet is running too. Now Turner is scared out of his wits. He urges Terry to call the police. No longer is it necessary for him to scream. As she's dialing 911, Turner opens the basement door. His fear makes it hard for him to venture inside, but he does it anyway. Even there, the faucet is turned on. He fearfully walks over to the circuit box and flips a switch from off to on. However, Terry confirms from above that the power still hasn't returned. Following this, Turner witnesses the most frightening sight. The ball from the living room is now on the lid of the well. We hear him shivering fearfully, and he tries to get out of there. Managing to escape the basement, he sees the faucets are pouring water again. In the living room, the ceiling lamp is shaking. If this isn't enough, a loud sound prompts him to enter the kitchen. In there, the cabinets are open, just like in the incident Greg told him about. Turner rushes upstairs and closes himself in the bedroom with Terry. Switching to the camera in the living room, we see the X on the table without the ball. The ceiling lamp continues to shake eerily. Come morning, Turner says they are getting ready to leave. He doesn't know what he should do with his acquired footage. It feels like he's discovered that Santa is real. But if he tells anyone about it, they're going to want to steal his footage. The man says he does not care if no one believes him. As he is driving away, he claims he's proud of himself. He also thinks he would have made his teacher proud. Remembering John's words regarding his hotel video, Turner thinks he said it best. At this moment, we are reminded that he believed how the public will always think his video is fake, even if it's real. Turner thinks that no video will ever be enough to make people believe that ghosts are real. He advises people to challenge themselves in the same way he did. If they know of a place that scares them, but don't know why, they should go there alone. Only in such a moment will they believe him. In the end, we see something that looks like a human figure, in the darkness of the basement. Perhaps it is the ghost of Ruth Blackwell, but no one knows for sure.